Shalom and good evening to everyone watching online and as well as those who have joined us this evening. I want to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome you all into our service today. Now, uh, today I would like to speak to you all from the word that Jesus spoke in John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why is it so important for everyone who has come into God's kingdom to receive the peace of Christ? You know, many a times we find people who have come into the kingdom, but they have failed to receive the peace of Christ. All right? There are many times when this has happened. We have seen this over you know, a number of years. We have seen this in the lives of people who have actually accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But they have not received the peace of Christ. Right Today, I want us to take a look at a story that was written by the tax collector, Matthew. And the same incident that was written in the gospel according to Mark and according to Luke. That means something was so important here that all three writers mentioned it in their writings. Now, I, I would say this is called the exorcism of the demoniac at Gadarines. I'm sure all of you know this story, right? Now, this story is many faceted. It has got many facets to it. And one can actually approach it from many sides. So I like to spend a little time about these different sides and before all else, to direct your attention to one circumstance connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now. The Savior, Jesus Christ, is God who became man. He is the word of God who created the universe. He rules the whole world by his wisdom. And suddenly here, as in a whole series of other occurrences, he forgets about everything, it seems, because in front of him, is a specific need, one specific suffering person who is enough for him to turn all his divine and human attention to that one person. Now, this is the remarkable trait in Christ. This is the remarkable trait in God. We often think that there are great and worthwhile things to do and things that are small and hardly worth our attention does not bring us to a place where we want to tackle them. But this is not so with God. There is no suffering, no pain, no need, no joy that God cannot relate to completely. With all his being, and sometimes introduce a new element into a hopeless situation. Open, as it were, a door, which makes a way out of the situation where there was no way before. So let's look at the story of this demoniac at Gadarenes. Now, I don't need to go into the specifics of it because you know the story. We know that this man was living among the tombs. We know that no one could bind him anymore. 
not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and with chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Just imagine that, such a man. And for this one man, Jesus crossed over across the Sea of Galilee to get into this place of the Gadarenes simply because of this one man who was there. He was living among the tombs. Indeed, it was the most frightful place to be in. You know, most times we don't like to go to the cemetery because our imagination always runs wild, especially among the children. So this was a place that the disciples of Jesus were reluctant to get to. Why? Because they had heard about the demoniac who was present at Gadarenes, and the story of this demoniac had reached all the regions around. They were not at all happy for Jesus to go across and to get down to deal with the demoniac. Why? Because the demoniac was a man who was in pain. Besides having pain in his life, he was a pain and he was a terror to his community because he oppressed everyone around him. He moved in the spirit of intimidation. He moved in violence. He lived in depression. No one could understand him. No one could understand the misery that he was going through. No one could set him free because the spirits that were within him were a legion. There was no one who was able to even go near him every time he needed help or every time he was cutting himself with stones. There was no one. And this was the very man whom Jesus decided to go and set free. Now, the Bible says, as he was getting into the boat, as who? As Jesus was getting into the boat, after he had set the man free, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. So what happened to this demoniac when he was restored? First of all, it meant that he had received the mercy of God. You know, the Bible says that the mercies of God are new every morning. They are new. They are not old. They are new. And this meant that that man received the mercies of God, which was new for him on that day. Secondly, he no longer became a terror to his community. He no longer terrorized them because he no longer operated in the spirit of intimidation and oppression. He no longer brought fear to those around him because he no longer operated in violence. Again, 
No longer did he become self-destructive. He got restored from cutting himself with stones because these are what demons do to human beings, the very creation of God, the masterpiece of God. These are what the demons do to those who are bound by them. The man became a man of peace. He was able to live in a community. He was able to be effective in a community. He became accepted in society. He no longer became rejected. He no longer became alone. Instead, when he received the mercies of God, thereby receiving the peace of God, he became whole and he became complete, no longer crying in misery. When he became whole, he yearned to follow Jesus. He got into the boat with Jesus. And this is a representation of a life surrendered to Christ. It is a representation of discipleship, wanting to become a disciple of Christ. The Bible says he begged Jesus, he begged him to allow Jesus to follow him around. But Jesus had other plans for him. Jesus wanted him to be a witness for him. Jesus wanted him to be an, um, an ambassador for him. Jesus said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. That is what it means to be an ambassador of Christ, to go out and to witness and tell of the goodness of God upon his life. Now, when we as believers receive the peace of God, it means we have received the mercy of God. It means we have tasted the goodness of God in our lives. It means we have tasted and seen how good God is. It means that the mercies of God are made new in our lives and it brings us to a place of causing us to become a new creation in Christ. Therefore, the mercy of God causes a sinner to be free completely and to become a saint of God. That's what it does. The, the peace of God comes to us when we receive the mercies of God. What happens to us, what happens to a believer when they taste the mercies of God? Number one, they are free from the burden of sin. Do you know that, bird, that sin carries a burden? Do you know that when you are free from the burden of sin, you will experience an indescribable peace and calmness from within you. This is the calmness that rests upon every child of God at redemption. This is the calmness and peace of God that rests upon the child of God when restoration has taken place in their lives. We don't have to work for this kind of peace, but this peace descends upon us because we are in mutual harmony with God. Harmony with God because we who were once alienated from God due to sin is now, we are now reconnected with God. This is what Paul speaks to us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Paul says to us, remember that at that time, 
you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So when we receive the peace of Christ, the peace of God, we are free from the burden of sin because the enemy is not able to put the burden of sin upon us anymore. We have been set free by Christ forever. Number two, we are free from, the, from anxiety, from regret, and from fear. That's why Paul speaks to us again. He says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Why is it that the peace of God transcends all understanding? Because the peace of God comes from God. The world cannot understand the peace of God. The world cannot receive the peace of God. No one can receive the peace of God unless they receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. That's the good news. Brothers and sisters, it is not far from you. It is not impossible to receive the peace of Christ. All you have to do is near to you. It is near to your mouth. It is near to your heart. That is why we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Number three. Receiving the secret to happiness to live in this world. You know, the world cannot receive the peace of God because it does not understand the peace of Christ. The world cannot comprehend the things of God because it is foolishness to the, to the knowledge and the wisdom of this world. But the peace of God makes us able to sleep and dwell in safety. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got to receive the secret to this happiness, which is ours, which only comes to us in Christ Jesus. And how does that happen? Great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. Psalms 119 verses verse 165. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. That's the promise of God to every believer who is willing to lay down their pride willing to lay down every ounce of arrogance and run to the Savior. Because Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, weary from the things of this world, weary from the burdens of sin, weary from all the demands of this world, weary from the demands of family, from the demands of friends, Weary in all things, but he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the peace of Christ. 
when we go to the Lord in all humility, God rewards our humility. He gives us his peace. There is what you call a supernatural transaction that takes place. There is what you call a supernatural exchange that takes place. We give to God our burdens. He gives to us his peace. The peace of God brings hope. Hope to live and have a godly designed future. And that is far why, my friends, God's peace is so different to the peace that is given to us from this world. Or whatever peace that you can receive from this world, it can never be compared to the peace of God because the peace of God can never be bought with money. The peace of God can never be bought with silver and gold. The peace of, of God can only be, re be received when we go to God in all humility, with all surrender, just as the man who was in the tombs came and he just bowed down, went on his knees before the Son of God and, and gave his life to God. That's why many times in this world, peace is very circumstantial. When the circumstances align, when you agree or come into an agreement, then and only then can peace be begotten. Peace is often negotiated for the purpose of bringing an end to the conflicts. Because of this, to have peace in this world, everything must line up with God's word. But you know, many a times people exchange their peace with the peace of this world. But this is not how God's peace works. It does not work that way. The peace of God does not come, but because there is just an agreement or a contract. Many times the circumstances are so at odds with each other that it would make peace seem impossible because there is just too much of chaos around you. This is what makes God's peace so different. It exists in the midst of chaos, and that is by design. That is by design. The peace of God transcends all understanding. That is what it is all about. It guards our hearts, it guards our minds to be aligned with the word of God so that everything about us is aligned to what God wants for us in our life. That way, we can never go wrong. That way, a child of God can receive inner healing. A child of God is able to come and pour forth their innermost, uh, you know, the innermost troubles, their innermost anguish, their fears, anxieties, and exchange it for the peace of Christ. Today, I pray that you will look at these things. I pray that you will bring those anxieties to the Lord. I pray that if there were regrets for past mistakes, I pray that you will bring it to the Lord because the, the Bible says that God is a God who saved yesterday, today, and forever. If you have lost something because you didn't have peace in your life, if you have lost an inheritance, if you have been cheated in your life, if you have been badly treated in your life, it's all in your past. Remember that whatever you have lost in your past, God is more than able to bring it to you today and he can bring it in your future because he's the God who saved yesterday, today, and forever. So today, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to encourage with you to look unto the Lord because he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. It is our faith that helps us to journey near the Lord. 
It is our faith that brings us to the Lord. It is our faith that causes us to submit to God and to resist every fear, to resist every anxiety, to resist every attack of the enemy that comes into your minds, every form of regret, every form of, you know, a burdens of all kinds of things. It is the word of God that helps us to become overcomers. It is the word of God that causes us to become more than conquerors when we begin to align ourselves with the Lord. This is what happens to us. We are set free from the burdens of our sin. We are set free from all our innermost turmoil. We are set free where we have received inner healing to our souls. This is where we need to receive the peace of Christ in our hearts and in our minds so that we can align ourselves with God and his word and rise up to become mighty men and women of God, becoming an ambassador of Christ, just like the demoniac who was once sitting in the tombs but now he had his entire destiny changed so that he can become a witness and an ambassador for Christ. You know, that leads us to a place of discipleship. Instead of we asking for all the time, you know, asking God to do all sorts of things, we can stand upon the word of God and we can bring the word of God to others who need help. Others who are sitting in burdens, others who are sitting in the tombs of sin and despair. This is where the church needs to rise up one more time. The people of God in the church must rise up to be a witness and an ambassador of the peace of Christ and the mercies of God. I pray this evening that you are blessed. I pray this evening that you have received a word that has touched your heart and your spirit. And I pray this evening that you will rise up to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you all one more time in the mighty name of Jesus to all those who are online and to all those who have come on board to be in this fellowship with us this evening. God bless you.